you, Mr. President. The last supplementary on this question goes to the Honorable E.M. Guterres. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable President. As we are all aware that some of the things that have exposed our country into such a debt is our economy does not grow, and the serious problem of corruption it does not only steal from the poor, but also deepens poverty. We have heard the president making so many undertakings in terms of tackling corruption and your invitation to the nation to lend their hand. But what we continue to see, Honorable well, President, can we conclude and say the president is failing to fight corruption or what we see is a clear act of sabotage uh, to your commitment of taking corruption from your colleagues in both government and your party. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tillis, the Honorable the President. I do, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I don't want to be singing the praises of uh, uh, this writer, J.P. Lundman, but I do want people to look at what he wrote because much more than anything, it's also a very technical type of assessment of what we have done. And as I said, uh, much more in depth than what I myself would ever have done, even if I were to sort of praise government or myself. <clears throat> but he outlines exactly what we have done. And if one looks at a number of steps that we have taken and looks at them objectively, and looks at, and looks and looks at please proceed honorable and looks at the impact of some of those uh, measures uh, you will find that we have made strides we have made progress and it's obviously progress that has not hit the bright lights of the front page of newspapers. And it's not the progress that has immediately resulted in what people wanted to see happening of uh, you know, the arrests and people going to prison and all that. But it's been more institutional reform type of progress progress where we are repositioning a lot of these institutions, and many of them had been compromised. Many of them had been captured. Many of them had been debilitated and disempowered. And they are beginning to come back into their own and beginning to function as the proud institutions of our country. And to the extent that I would say one has failed to deal with corruption, I think one needs to look at what has been done in that sort of uh, sector uh, of repositioning various institutions. And one will find that, yes, there has been progress, so there hasn't been failure there. Um, and I think we need to give those institutions the time and the space to continue doing their work. And you talk about, yes, there's been possibly either sabotaging or whatever. I, would, I wouldn't say that that is the issue. Of course, a number of those institutions may still well have people who still want to put the brakes on, who still want to ensure that things don't happen in the way that this institution should work. It is possible. And of course, people who have benefited from corruption, benefited from uh, state capture, are the ones who are going to fight back much harder, much more vociferously, because the well-functioning of any institution is the type that they fear most. And all we want, and all the people of our country want, is to have institutions that function well, institutions that will fulfill their mandates, and institutions that will not have people who will uh, work in a way that favors certain other interests and certain other people. We want institutions that will work without any fear, favor, and without prejudice. 
Because once we get our country back to that, then there is no sabotaging, then there is no diversion, there is just focus in getting our country back to work. And that, Honorable Butelezi, is precisely what I'm committed to doing. Thank you very much.